Warning, the following story contains descriptions of graphic violence. Viewer discretion is strongly advised. This is the case of Tommy Lynn Sells. Tommy Lynn Sells was born in Oakland, California on June 28, 1964 as one of five children to an unwed mother. Sells' presumed biological father, Joe Lovins, died when Sells was just 11 years old. Sells and his twin sister, Tammy Jean, contracted meningitis when they were 18 months old. Tammy died from the illness. Shortly thereafter, Sells was sent to live with his aunt, Bonnie Walpole, in Holcomb, Missouri. When he was five years old, he was returned to his mother after she discovered that Walpole wanted to adopt him. At the age of seven, Sells began regularly drinking alcohol obtained from a supply stash belonging to his maternal grandfather. Within a year, he was socializing with an adult man named Willis Clark, who Sells alleged began molesting him. Sells also claimed that his mother encouraged the relationship, which traumatized and further impacted him greatly. Sells said he would later relieve those experiences while committing his crimes. At age 10, Sells started using narcotics. Three years later, he entered his grandmother's bed nude while she was still sleeping, leading to him being banned from the house. Shortly after that, his mother and siblings abandoned him by abruptly leaving town. A few days later, in a fit of rage, he shot a woman and assaulted her, although she survived. Sells began living as a nomad permanently in 1978 at the age of 14. When Sells visited family in Little Rock, Arkansas in May 1981, his mother threw him out after he tried to molest her in the shower. Thereafter, he failed to receive mental health assistance. His drinking worsened and ultimately led to his first arrest in 1982 for public intoxication. Homeless, Sells hitchhiked and train hopped across the United States from 1978 to 1999, committing various crimes along the way. He held several very short-term manual labor and barber jobs. He drank heavily, abused drugs, and was in prison several times. In 1990, Sell stole a truck in Wyoming and was sentenced to 16 months imprisonment. He was diagnosed with personality disorder consisting of antisocial, borderline, and schizoid features, substance use disorder, bipolar disorder, and major depressive disorder, along with psychosis. On May 13, 1992, Fabine Witherspoon, a 19-year-old woman in Charleston, West Virginia, was driving when she saw a Sells panhandling under an overpass with a sign that said, I will work for food. She felt sorry for him and took him into her home, asking him to wait outside. She went into her home to get some food for him, and by the time she got back to her front door, he was inside. When she walked away to get something else, he got a knife from her kitchen, trapped her in a bathroom, and attempted to rape her. The woman fought back, hitting him in the head repeatedly with a ceramic duck and getting control of his knife and stabbing him, nicking his kidney and liver. In addition, his testicle was sliced. In retaliation, Sells beat her over the head with a piano stool. Sells tried to get away, but his injuries landed him in the ICU and in police custody. Witherspoon sustained significant injuries herself, including a gaping head wound and a severe hand laceration that required surgery. After this attack, Sells took a plea deal on malicious wounding charges and served five years in prison. While serving his sentence, he was diagnosed with bipolar disorder and married Nora Price. He was released in 1997 and moved to Tennessee with his wife. He then left her that same year and resumed his cross-country travels. Police investigators believe Sells murdered at least 22 people. Retired Texas Ranger John Allen said, We did confirm 22. I know there's more. I know there's a lot more. Obviously, we won't ever know. Sells said he committed his first murder at age 15 in Mississippi after breaking into a house. While in the house, Sells claimed to have discovered a man performing fellatio on a boy and killed the man in a fit of rage. This confessed crime has not been confirmed. Furthermore, in 1980, Sells claimed he killed a man with an ice pick near a Chinese restaurant in Los Angeles, which has also never been confirmed. Nonetheless, Sells has been linked or has confessed to multiple crimes. July 5, 1979, Port Gibson, Mississippi, 
John Cade, age 39, was killed with a 22 caliber pistol during a home invasion. Near the crime scene, a man who resembled Sells was observed. He may have been in the area around this period, according to investigators. April 27, 1982, St. Louis, Missouri. In November 2015, Melissa DeBoer contacted police after watching an episode of Crime Watch Daily, which featured Sells. In 1982, DeBoer's mother, Joanne Tate, age 35, was murdered in her St. Louis home. Her testimony as a seven-year-old assaulted in the sexual attack helped identify Rodney Lincoln as the killer. However, DeBoer came to believe Sells, not Lincoln, murdered her mother in 1982. In 2018, Missouri Governor Eric Greitens commuted Lincoln's sentence to time served when he was released from prison. July 26, 1985, Springfield, Missouri. In July 1985, 21-year-old Sells worked at a Forsyth Carnival where he met 28-year-old Anna Court and her 4-year-old son, Rory Court. Court invited Sells to her home that evening. According to Sells, he had sex with her, fell asleep, and woke to find her stealing from his backpack. He proceeded to beat Court to death with her son's baseball bat. He then murdered her son because the child was a potential witness. The bludgeon bodies were found three days later, by which time Sells had left town. May 1, 1987, Lockport, New York. Suzanne Corks, 27, disappeared after leaving a Lockport nightclub alone. Her body was found on September 5, 1995, at the foot of an embankment near Niagara Falls, two miles away. Her cause of death was unknown due to decomposition. In 2004, Sells confessed that he had murdered a woman in the area at that time, and his presence in the city was confirmed. He was even able to identify her in the photographs from the crime scene. Since he had already been sentenced to death, he was not prosecuted. October 15, 1987, Lovelock, Nevada. Stephanie Kelly Stroh, age 21, was last seen at the four-way cafe and truck stop in Wells, Nevada. Sells confessed to Stroh's murder. He said he picked her up while she was hitchhiking after he offered her a ride to Reno, Nevada. They took LSD together, then he strangled her in Lovelock, covered her body in concrete, and dumped it in a hot spring. Her body was never found. November 17, 1987, Ina, Illinois. Sells confessed to the murders of four members of the Dardeen family. While he was hitchhiking, Sells was picked up by Keith Dardeen, age 29, who brought him to his home for dinner. When they arrived at the residence, Sells put out a handgun and shot Keith in the head twice. He then emasculated him before shooting him once more in the head. Keith's three-year-old son, Peter Dardine, was bludgeoned to death, and Sells also attacked Elaine Dardine, Keith's 30-year-old pregnant wife. She went into labor after being beaten to death and gave birth to their daughter, whose name was supposed to be Casey Dardine. He fatally bludgeoned Casey before mutilating Elaine's breasts and sexually assaulting her corpse with the baseball bat that he had used to murder her children which he had left protruding out of her vaginal opening. December 18, 1988, Tucson, Arizona. Kent Allen Lawton, 51, was stabbed and buried in a shallow grave near a homeless camp. Sells claimed he killed Lawton because he refused to pay for drugs. His body was found two days later. December 9, 1991, Mariana, Florida. Teresa Hall, age 25, and her five-year-old daughter, Tiffany Hall, were both bludgeoned to death with a wooden table leg in their home. The killer had kicked in the front door, smashed a wooden table into pieces, and used one of the legs as a murder weapon. Serial killer Angel Matarino Resendez was suspected of the crime originally, but Sells later confessed to the double murder. October 13, 1997, Lawrenceville, Illinois. A 10-year-old Joel Kirkpatrick was stabbed to death in his bedroom while he was sleeping at night. His mother, Julie Ray Harper, ran to her son's bedroom, encountered an intruder wearing a ski mask, and then fought off the intruder before fleeing. The murder weapon, a steak knife from Ree's kitchen, had been left on the floor outside Joel's bedroom. She was convicted of Joel's murder, but was eventually exonerated. October 15, 1997, Springfield, Missouri. 13-year-old Stephanie Mahaney was found in 1997 in a farm pond west of Springfield. According to Sells, he pulled her from her bed in her home at night, drove her to a field, injected her with cocaine, essayed her, and strangled her to death. December 14, 1997, 
Las Vegas, Nevada. 19-year-old Yvette Sophia Mueller was last seen in an RV park in Las Vegas. Cells claimed to have essayed and killed the blonde-haired woman in Las Vegas, chopped her body up with an axe and buried her next to the Snake River. The body was never found because it had been swept away by a landslide, but officials suspect Cells was referring to Mueller. April 15, 1998, San Antonio, Texas, Thomas Bros, age 40, was a carnival worker who was shot to death in his motorhome. He was seen with a man matching Cell's description. Cell's initially confessed to the crime but later recanted it. April 4, 1999, Gibson, Tennessee. Deborah Harris, age 31, and her eight-year-old daughter, Abrea Halliburton, were both killed after Cell's broke into their house at night and essayed Harris in her bed. She was stabbed repeatedly with her own kitchen knife, which was left in her chest. Halliburton was stabbed three times after she witnessed Sells murder her mother. April 18, 1999, San Antonio, Texas. A nine-year-old Mary Patrice Perez was kidnapped from a market festival, driven to a stockyard, essayed and strangled to death with her t-shirt. Her body was found in the creek 10 days later. Sells was convicted of the murder. May 23, 1999, Lexington, Kentucky. Haley McComb, 13, was kidnapped from a swing by cells, dragged to a wooded area and essayed. She was then strangled to death with her t-shirt and covered with debris. Her body was found 10 days later. Cells was arrested in the area around that time for an unrelated charge. July 5th, 1999, Kingfisher, Oklahoma. Bobby Lynn Wofford, age 14, was picked up from a Love's convenience store by Cells who drove her to a secluded area, essayed her, stabbed her repeatedly with the hatchet, and then shot her in the head with a large caliber revolver when she tried to escape. He dumped her body off the side of the road and kept two of her earrings. On December 31st, 1999, in the Guajia Bay subdivision of West Del Rio, Texas, Cells essayed, stabbed, and killed a 13-year-old Kayleen Katie Harris before slitting the throat of 10-year-old Crystal Surlis. Crystal survived and received help from the neighbors after traveling a quarter mile to their home with a severed trachea. Cells was apprehended after being identified from a sketch made from the victim's description. Cells also claimed he killed a 20-year-old woman, who he originally thought was a man, in a drug deal gone wrong in Truckee, California on January 27, 1989. A report of an unrelated incident established that Sells was in the area and an unidentified female body was found in the area at that time. In addition, at one time Sells claimed to have killed two unidentified female hitchhikers in May 1989 in Roseburg, Oregon. Finally, Sells referenced other additional victims who he was said to have killed and dumped in Florida swamps while he worked there as well as several gay men at various rest stops along the interstate in Pennsylvania. The state's attorney in Jefferson County, Illinois, declined to charge Sells with the Dardeen family homicides in 1987 because his confession to the quadruple killing, while generally consistent with the facts of the case as reported in the media, was inaccurate with concern to some detail that had not been made public. He also changed his account three times regarding how he had met the family. Investigators wanted to bring Sells to Southern Illinois to resolve their doubts but Texas refused due to its law forbidding death row prisoners from leaving the state. Police over time came to suspect him of working the system by confessing to murders he had not committed. Sells confessed to a number of crimes and supposed murders which were never able to be corroborated. Sells said that he and an accomplice kidnapped a woman in 1982 in Little Rock, Arkansas, who he then essayed, tortured, and murdered, then dumped her body in a quarry. Law enforcement chose not to explore the deep quarry lake Sells led them to due to financial concerns. Sells revealed that in 1986, while he was working for Atlas Towing in St. Louis, he received the call from a prostitute whose car had broken down. When he arrived at the vehicle, he suggested sex in lieu of paying for the towing cost. When she declined, Sells said that he had shot her and threw her body in a river. Sells also divulged that in 1988 he met a woman and her son in Salt Lake City, Utah, and traveled with them to go on a camping trip. Sells claimed he killed her and her son by an unclear method and dumped both their bodies in the Snake River in Gooding County, Idaho. 
Sells once stated to investigators that he had killed a black man and dumped his body in a dumpster in Chicago. He named the specific street intersection this allegedly occurred at, but no such murder was ever discovered. Sells was housed on death row in the Allen B. Polunsky unit near Livingston, Texas. The Texas Department of Criminal Justice received him on November 8, 2000. In 2004, Sells confessed that on October 13, 1997, he broke into a home, took a knife from a butcher block in the kitchen, stabbed a little boy to death, and scuffled with a woman. Those details corroborated with the account of Julie Ray Harper, who was initially convicted for the murder of her son, and then acquitted in 2006. On January 3, 2014, a Del Rio judge set Sell's execution date for April 3, 2014. Sell's death sentence was carried out by the Texas State Penitentiary in Huntsville. When asked if he would like to make a final statement, Sells replied, No, as a lethal dose of pentobarbital was administered. He took a few deep breaths, closed his eyes, and began to snore. Less than a minute later, he stopped moving. Thirteen minutes later, at 6.27 p.m., he was pronounced dead. Crystal Surlis and members of both Harris and Perez families attended the execution. <laughs>